Hello, my name is George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. So we make many videos and one uh, type is geographical ones, places where people may have come from in England, Scotland, parts of, etc. So this is one of those about England, um, about the home counties of England, the area surrounding London, various counties, Kent, Middlesex and so on and so forth. And what we want to do is give you a bit of a feel if you have ancestors from around there and the sort of things you may find that we can dig up for you. So let's have a look at this in more detail. So here's a map of the counties of uh, um, the home counties in southeast England. So you can see London and the way London is now and it's surrounded by these counties Kent, Sussex, Surrey, Berkshire, Middlesex, Essex but in the old days they were there, but it was very different because London literally just meant the city of London. You may have heard the expression, the square mile. So London was much, much smaller in the 19th century and before then, and the counties went right up to this. So the county of Middlesex is not actually on this modern map, but it used to go right up to places, Westminster, where the House of Parliament on, it wasn't in London, it was, it was in there. So the the counties surrounding London in the southeast of England that we're going to be talking about. Um, now, what is interesting with the Industrial Revolution, many people migrated from the country to where the work was in the cities, and that included London, it included other places like Manchester and Birmingham. The population of London grew from 1 million in 1800 to 7 million in 1900, the largest city in the world. And so people would migrate to London during the Industrial Revolution. A big other thing that happened in the 19th century was the railways came and that meant that people could live further away from their work. So in fact you find nowadays quite a few people living in the home counties, uh, they talk about stockbroker belt at times, and actually have migrated from London to other areas around there. And your ancestor stories may reflect that. Now there's some very wealthy areas there, some of the wealthiest areas in Britain. Um, and I talk about migration, not only migration from around London, but from other parts of, of England and Scotland, Wales and Ireland, and also from overseas with the Commonwealth, as many people have come in from countries like India and the West Indies and, and so on. And so very mixed population. Um, now, a little thing, I don't know if you follow sport, but county cricket, the counties there still very much follow the counties as they used to be. An example here is you can see Sussex is now West Sussex and East Sussex. In the old days, it was Sussex, and the county cricket team of Sussex is, is just that. So here we have the modern counties. I mentioned London in the middle, you know, much smaller, but people debate to an extent, to what extent are Buckinghamshire and Bedfordshire home counties or not. We don't need to get too technical about that, but that's what we're talking about. Your ancestors who lived in the, these places. So let's look at some examples. What I want to try and do here is just give you a little flavour of the sorts of things we may find about your ancestors. So here we have the Enfield. Um, so Joseph, he's born in Gravesend in Kent at the end of the... Uh, 19th century and he dies 50 years later in in Middlesex he's moved a little bit so going back in time yes his father's from Gravesend very much his mother actually comes from Westminster but then in Middlesex so where the House of Commons is as I say was in Westminster but was in Middlesex and they moved to Gravesend and going back in the Enfields here Chatham just along the way from Gravesend Mother Martha came from Harwich in Essex. Essex was north of the River Thames. River Thames a very big feature in London, of course, and the county of Essex was to the north of that, the county of Kent to the south. So here we have a flavour of, of a family. Now, the jobs they did, well, Joseph was a publican, and then his sons became carpenters. Um, but let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So Joseph marries Emma in 1866. Key document is the census. And what I particularly want to look at here, they're living in Gravesend, but the census tells us where people were born. So in this case, it's just Joseph and his wife at this stage. So um, Joseph there, Gravesend, Emma from Suffolk. Now they've got two people visiting them and they come from parts of Essex. So already we've got a bit of a flavor of people coming from different parts of Essex. And if we go back to this, then we've got Joseph, say he, he's clearly moved from Gravesend, he marries Mary, who's from Bethnal Green in Middlesex. I'm sure you've heard of the East End of London, the Cockneys and so on, Bethnal Green very much in that part, but it was then in Middlesex. And nowadays, as I say, you would certainly say it was in London. 
So a little bit of a flavor there, and of course Mary going back on her ancestors, well, there we are. Dad came from Suffolk in East Anglia, and mother's from Wales. So we've got a mixture here. We haven't just got people from the home counties. So it's like another case. Here's Frederick Miller. He's born in Middlesex in Hampstead, very wealthy area these days. And he dies in Barnet in Hertfordshire, so moved out a little bit further, but still in the southeast of England. And he marries Nora, who is from Kent, southeast of London. And she, in fact, dies. She goes to Bedfordshire, moves out further. Um, and they marry in Enfield in Middlesex. So here we are, here they're getting married. There's the document, just to pick out a couple of things in this. You'll get very familiar with old documents when we look at these things for you. It tells us about Frederick and Nora, of the ages, the Batter and Spinster. He's a merchant and it says where he lives and where she lives. It gives us the father of each, says Thomas Miller and William Grundy, both merchants. Interesting. I'm getting a bit of a flavour of what may be going on here, where they come from. Um, so let's look at that in a little bit more detail. And we go back in time. Yes, there's Frederick, his dad, Thomas. He's born in Scotland. He's born in Glasgow and clearly has come down to um, the London area, to the home counties. His mother's born in Ipswich in Suffolk, in East Anglia, just to the north of the home counties. And she will die in Hertfordshire as uh, Frederick dies. Going back in time, there's Andrew. So dad's from Glasgow in Scotland. Andrew is from Ayrshire, just south of Glasgow. And he clearly, he moves down to the uh, home counties area as well. So let's look at that more detail. So here's Andrew. And what we want to do when we go search around is, is find out more about them. In this case, we managed to find photos. Quite often you will have old photos. You may or may not know who the people are. But here's Andrew, he's a Muslim manufacturer. Born 1810, so born over 200 years ago. He moves down to Islington in the 1840s. Now, uh, just a fact, but he happens to be a preacher for the Plymouth Brethren. The more we can find these sort of facts about your ancestors, the more we get a feel for them, the more we bring them to life. And here's where he lived in Islington. Now, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't own the whole building, but uh, quite a common thing in those days was people shared buildings, lived on various floors. But, you know, here we are. Already we're getting a bit of a flavour for this family. So, you know, one other example, the Connors. So there's Joseph. Yes, he's born in Middlesex in Brentford, a little bit further out. Um, he marries Ellen, who's from Hampshire, uh, just a bit, a bit further to the west. Um, their son Austin, he's born in Islington, Middlesex. Islington, you would certainly say, was in London these days. Quite, quite interesting, a, a, an area that probably wasn't very well to do in the old days. Nowadays, quite an exclusive area. And their son Dennis is born in Middlesex, and Mum has come from Surrey, so she's come from south of London. Um, going back in time, there's James, he's born in Middlesex. Mother born in India. Now, that gives a clue. And in fact, we find that what we've got here is a military family. So uh, James has met Mercy, who was born in India. Probably her father was out there on some sort of military work or, or other things. But there's James born in Bedfordshire. So he's a bit further north still. So uh, in the home counties area, but a little bit further out. Sarah born in Hampshire. And we can see here, James is actually in the 11th Light Dragoons. His son goes in the army too as a drill sergeant. And then coming down the way, Joseph is a stationer and they do other things. So let's have a little bit look at the story here. So James is in the 11th Light Dragoon, so we research what they got up to. And here we are, the early 1800s, very much fighting with France and Napoleon, uh, Peninsula War and various other wars there. And the most famous war of all, almost the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Um, the, like Dragoon City captured the last French gun still firing and James O'Connor fought in these battles so our ancestors lived through history and here we are another example or a different example of what someone from the home counties may have done up to in their life so I hope you get, give you a bit of a flavor we've made a lot of videos and um, so here's some examples so with, with England we've got ones on London Lancashire Birmingham we've made recently you may have Scottish ancestors, so what about Scottish ancestors? Surnames may find uh, be of interest. We find a lot of people interested in surnames, so we've got a number of surnames. And then people often ask, well, what would it be like if you did research my ancestors? So we got three couples to sit down and talk about what they got out of this. Again, all designed to try and give you a flavour 
for what may happen and an interest in knowing more and more about your family and your ancestors. So thanks very much for listening. Feel free to get in touch. We offer a free consultation. You send us the brief details of what you know. We have a look and assess what the options are and come back to you with that and with the associated costs. Um, there are contact details. You can email us at info at researchreadpeople.com. Give us a ring if necessary. So thank you for listening. I hope you found that interesting. Please feel free to get in